Hello, this is David Mandel once again. And uh, welcome to week seven of CIS 240L. That's uh, Linux Systems Administration, or Unix slash Unix, or or Linux slash Unix Systems Administration, given in the summer of 2012. Um, okay, for this week, what we're going to do is um, uh, first thing, let's like normal, look at Caligator and see what's happening in our event calendar for Portland. Um, events coming up here on Caligator.org are um, Lab2 Market. Don't know what that is. PDX Drones inaugural meeting. That sounds pretty cool. Um, at PSU. Um, of course, that's tonight when you should be in class. Um, um, the Ruby Brigade meets tonight. Um, tomorrow night, here is a Tour Camp 2012. I've never heard of that. I don't know what that is. Um, OP, o OEN Pub Talk, uh, Drupal group, User Group Meeting. That should be a good meeting. Um, Oregon SQL Monthly Meeting, Ruby Beginners Meetup, um, and so on. Um, OK, so that gives us kind of an overview of what's happening this um, this week, a brief overview. You can go there yourself for, to find out more details. Let's go back here. Next thing, quiz four is open. Um, you need to do quiz four sometime this week. Um, and, um, and then quiz five is next week. Um, it, we're winding down towards the end of the term. Uh, class evaluation should be available for you to uh, fill out. I really would appreciate if you did um, evaluate me. I evaluate you. You get to evaluate me. Um, and, um, and I learn a lot from the evaluations. Um, so uh, they are valuable. And I do take to heart what you say and incorporate it in my future classes. For this week, we need to read chapter 10 on, um, chapter 10 is on general Linux or on a um, task that Unix systems administrators do. I believe the chapter is called Common Administrative Task. It's things like, oh, adding printers to the system, administrating printers, administrating, um, oh, removable disk drives, um, log file administration, things of that type. It's actually a short chapter, and you should be able to go through it fairly fast. and. Um, yeah. And um, Lab 10 basically asks you to, to try to do some administrative task. Um, if you've got a printer, adding a printer or a scanner to your system, um, or add some users, uh, particularly add a number of users, and play around with adding users and deleting users. Um, basically, it, You'll have to decide on what sort of administrative task you can do, depending on what you have available to you. Um, and uh, Lab 10 gives you a lot of options on that. OK, the next thing is I should mention people, you know, this is a short term. Summer's term is a short term, and people are falling a bit behind. Um, don't feel real bad unless you're really behind. But by and large, don't feel real bad. Most of the work that I have seen is good, high quality work. It's not coming in quite fast enough. And as a result, I keep moving back the dates that I grade things. And then people seem to fall more behind. So I'm not quite sure um, how things are going to work out. But I am sure everything is going to work out. and um, and. And by and large, I'm not real concerned about most people. I'm a little concerned because we do need to get things in. Uh, the truth is, I will be, um, I had planned on going out of town just as soon as I could get free. Th those plans fell through. Um, 
I was going to go to Brazil. It looks like I may go to Brazil around Christmas time. In any case, uh, the result is, is I will. I'm not in any rush during finals week, so um, you can have pretty much all of finals week, or certainly up until Friday of finals week to get things in, and um, and I can still have things graded by Monday. And um, um, but get things in as quickly as you can, because because um, we are. You know, uh, this is week seven in an eight-week term, but the eight-week term doesn't count finals week. So we've got, it's actually nine weeks, but still this is week seven. So we need to uh, do the best we can. If you need to cut labs a little shorter, uh, do it. Um, um, I just, basically, I just want people to learn a lot from this class. Um, OK, topic for discussion. Um, I'll, I'd like to talk just a little bit about life as a Unix systems administrator. I probably talk about this in the videos. Um, and I talk about a lot of the details that I think are missing from chapter um, 10 in the chapter, or in the videos. But um, life as a Unix systems administrator, in a way, the book and the certification exams and things give you the impression that there's one lifestyle as a Unix sysadmin. There isn't. The job varies a great deal. Um, a lot of uh, some Unix sysadmins are big, are full time. They work for big companies that may have a ream of Unix sysadmins, and they've got junior Unix sysadmins, or maybe computer operators. And then there is the next tier of Unix sysadmins who are kind of learning the job yet, but are pretty good with things. And then there's the senior Unix sysadmins. And, um, and maybe they deal mostly with Unix and very little with Windows. Then you've got the um, sysadmins that work for maybe mid-sized companies where you've got a few people that kind of know what they're, that, that have a good grasp for everything, um, some better than others. And they will work on both the Windows systems and the Unix systems and any other system you have. Some of them actually will work on telephone systems and um, uh, mobile systems, particularly people in police or fire work often work on uh, things that we barely think of as computer systems. But uh, of course, they are, but they involve a lot of hardware as well as the software. Um, some Unix system admins are part-time, uh, or, uh, or maybe they have a full-time job. But they do the Unix sysadmin as just part of what they do. And they also may be a programmer. Uh, I've often worked in that capacity where I was a scientific programmer, and oh yeah, I took care of the the the, the cluster of the Unix cluster and a few of the workstations on people's desk as well. Um, many teachers, when I taught college at Pioneer Pacific College, part of my job was taking care of all the um, well, part of the job of the three faculty we had was taking care of all of our computers on campus as well, both the Unix and the Windows systems. Um, my wife did systems administration, and she was a mathematical statistician. Most of her work was doing statistics. But you know, somebody had to take care of the machines, and often that was her. Um, there's um, Many people, because it is often a part-time job, particularly with small companies, what they will do is they become consultants. And they will take care of, uh, I've got quite a few friends who are consultants. And they take care of a cluster, the Unix system at a cluster of companies. So they may have 10, 15, who knows how many clients that they take care of all their Unix systems. Um, and maybe take care of their websites as well, or something like that. Um, I've got one friend who's done that for, gee, his whole lifetime. I think his website's calldale.com. Um, call um, but I've got a lot of friends that do that. And that, that is one lifestyle that works out quite well. Um, 
in general, I found there's a big difference between working at a large company and a small company. Um, I tend to enjoy working at small companies. The pay usually is not quite as good. The non-monetary benefits are usually much better in that you have a lot more authority. Um, large companies, they will have clusters of Unix sys admins instead of one or two. And there will be a big bureaucracy you've got to report to. And um, that appeals to some people. It gives you, they generally have good job security um, and, and a good support system where they can train more junior people and um, things of that type. Small companies usually don't have that, but usually you have a lot more power in determining what goes on. Um, so to each their own. I would note that there are a lot of jobs in s large companies where you may be working for a department in a large company that actually feels much more like working for a small company. When I was working at um, Oregon State University, I worked for a small research group, maybe 10 people. In the College of OSU College of Oceanography, we had very little to do with the computer center. In fact, we rebelled against them. That's why I was hired. I was, I was part of the rebel forces, and um, and that meant that I did systems administration. I did a lot of system stuff, and I was a programmer, uh, a math mathematician, mathematical programmer, um, and. Um, and it felt very much like working for a small company, even to the point of if we didn't get funding, the university wasn't going to support me. I was just out on the street. So it, even to that extent, it, it felt very much like working for a small company. Um, last thing is sometimes it's hard to find jobs. <laughs> Uh, as you probably well realize, we're going through a recession. One of the things you always need to think about and, and do is use any opportunity you can to make your own job. And, and sometimes that means when you're working for a company, if you see something, some place where you can expand their activity or bring in money or save money, um, well, that's money they can pay you. Um, and um, I've often found that um, in many cases one can actually create their own job uh, either by going outside and going independent, like becoming a small consultant, like calldale.com, or by um, working within a company and actually building a department within a company um, which will then fund you and hopefully um, if, if you produce a revenue stream, basically if you produce a revenue stream, people will hire you. Um, um, that's the bottom line. If you can get, if you can earn money for a company, money, uh, they will hire you. Um, okay. And that does take a bit of creativity and, um, um, but do think in those lines, you know. Don't think in lines of I deserve a job or, or whatnot. Think more in lines of, you know, what can I do for my employer so that I am really important to them, um, almost indispensable. Um, and, um, and, and, you know, um, and as I say, the guy that brings in money, um, there'll be money to pay his salary or her salary. Okay, that's everything I had to say this week. And um, so have a good week. Bye-bye.